Hi, uh, you are watching Site Simplus and this is Romesh Shivastu. Please do subscribe to the channel for the HR news, for HR updates and conversation with the top of CHROs, thought leaders and business sites. Today we are going to understand uh, maternity benefits and its impact on the organization and also on the women's employment. We have already created a video that what the law says about maternity benefits and leaves. We will put the uh, link of that video in the description box, but we are not going into detail. We will discuss that what has been the impact, what kind of the grievances are coming in organization, what the challenges women are facing. We will discuss on this. We have two senior experts. Let me introduce Mr. Praveen Purohit. He is a deputy group CHRO at Vedanta Group. And Ms. Suma Arvi. She is a partner with the KSK Advocates and Attorneys. Suma, first I would like to come to you and I would like to understand in a brief, if you can share that what the law says about maternity benefits and the more important part is that, uh, is there any update after 2017 on this? So as all of us uh, know, uh, maternity benefit, it is applicable to establishments with 10 or more employees for that matter. So in 2017, we saw a major change in the act which increased the maternity leave period from 12 weeks to 26 weeks. And certain other changes that were like brought into force uh, by way of amendment, those are like, you know, introduction of crash facilities under the act where you require to give crash to, uh, you know, facility to women employees. If you have like 50 or more employees for that matter, and then there was like, you know, a new concept of uh, bringing in uh, commissioning mothers, adoptive, uh, you know, mother, adopting mother within the ambit of Maternity Benefit Act. Uh, in 2017, it also introduced, a, you know, um, it also um, a recognized requirement for work from home for women employees, where the act said that, you know, if the employer and employee mutually agree, then work from home option can be given to the women employees post maternity leave period. So these were the major changes that were like, you know, brought in in the year 2017. Post that we have not seen like, you know, major legislative changes, but of course there are some laws in pipeline, like, you know, social security code, which broadly, uh, you know, ha broadly has the same provision as in the maternity benefit act. The second one recently, there is another act which has been notified, but of course the you know effective date is still not given, which is relating to unorganized sectors. So this is the law relating to unorganized, you know, extending the maternity benefits to unorganized sector. Uh, so wherein there will be government funded maternity fund and you know government sponsored. Uh, crash facilities, maybe it's Anganwadi or some other government setup. So this is basically to cover the women employees who are uh, working in unorganized sector as defined under the code on uh, social security. That is, you know, if you have less than 10 or more uh, employees in that case, and if you're like home-based worker, self-employment. So to cover, you give, to extend the maternity benefits to them, this law has been enacted. But of course, it, the effective date is still not given. So we are waiting, uh, you know, it's still in pipeline. So these are the major legislative changes. However, like, you know, there has been number of cases before the Supreme Court as well as the High Court uh, relating to maternity benefits. So in many cases, it's against the government establishments. In some, it, it's against the private sector as well. But the principle are applicable across, you know, every industry who are covered under the Maternity Benefit Act or any other sort of like, you know, maternity benefit regulations or, you know, extended by the government or whatever uh, for that matter. So made one significant judgment that uh, came in um, recently is the Supreme Court decision, which said, uh, you know, uh, the maternity benefit will extend beyond the tenure of the contract. See, this is mo mostly applicable to fixed term contracts. Uh, even if the uh, uh, you know, contract terminates, the maternity benefit entitlement will not terminate for that matter. So this is a significant decision that, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Supreme Court has, uh, you know, uh, delivered. And apart from that, we have like lot many high court decisions. In one case, the Rajasthan High Court said, you know, recognize that uh, a woman uh, be getting uh, uh, children through surrogacy is entitled to many maternity benefit, which is already there in uh, you know, Maternity Benefit Act. 
The other one is where uh, the employer deferred the date of joining. The court said, no, you can't do it. You can't deny uh, the joining because of, you know, pregnancy. Like, you know, at the later stage, if someone comes to know that woman is pregnant, just because for that reason, you can't deny the right to appointment or joining to a woman employee. This was the judgment by the Uttarakhand uh, you know, High Court. Then there are like a couple of other judgments where, you know, Delhi High Court, Madras High Court, they have said that, you know, you have to equate temporary contractual workers to permanent workers when you are extending the maternity benefits. You can't deny these benefits to them because it's associated with the life and dignity of women employee. Right. So in one case, the Delhi High Court also said if you are like denying uh, any benefits related to maternity, uh, you know, of a woman, so you will be like, you know, um, taking measure against social justice. So uh, you can't deny that. And it is the identity of women. So you can't just deny any sort of like, you know, benefits to women employees. So this is the overall like development uh, in the in this area for that matter. Of course, uh, you know, one has to be very cautious and they should also know that courts have always taken a liberal interpretation when it comes to extending of maternity benefits to women employees. Right, right. You know, I think uh, excellent inputs to share and especially the cases to report for this. Uh, Praveen, uh, I would like to come to you now and uh, 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 I would like to understand that what has been your experience uh, after the implementation of this, especially the 26 weeks of maternity leave after the amendment in 2017. What is your experience? How it has, uh, you know, has been significant for the organizations and women and how to see the impact when uh, we were trying to implement this uh, maternity uh, leave for 26 weeks, there were also certain apprehensions that this could you know, in your uh, impact uh, women employment or so, this could be also a burden for the uh, employer. So after uh, four years or so, how do you see, what is your experience about this? No, thanks, Romesh. This is a very, very interesting topic. And uh, I think uh, for a progressive country, for a progressive organization, this is something what I have personally experienced is um, people welcome this kind of, uh, you know, changes by and large, if you ask me. Uh, just a case in point, you know, the amendment, what Suma just talked about, that in 2017, the 12 weeks leave had gone up to 26 weeks. But let me tell you, uh, when it comes to the case of Vedanta, our organization, we did this change in 2016 itself, even before it came into an act, if you ask me. So we were always, you know, our thinking has been very clear that whatever possible, best thing we can do, we need to go for that. And um, at least in our industry context, if you ask me, uh, people welcome this kind of changes while this evolution, whatever we have seen, um, if you ask me, um, the thinking, the intent is there, but um, uh, it has been very gradual in terms of whatever changes we have seen from 1961 till date. But now, um, but now the people are very positive. They want to go beyond that. While 26 weeks is, of course, there, uh, but maybe if you ask, you know, experience of mine, I know a few examples and we had seen something in media in very recent past, uh, even for that matter, Vedanta, 26 weeks are there, but we have gone much beyond that. What other things probably we can provide to our people? And for that, you know, there are a lot of things which demands a kind of flexibility, which demands a kind of, you know, uh, sabbatical, so on and so forth, which are very progressive in nature. And I think we have started talking about those kind of benefits. Uh, the only thing is, Ramesh, till the time, there is no delusion to performance. There is no delusion to productivity. I think whatever the best thing we can able to bring in terms of the progressive policies, I think we need to go for it. And in my understanding, in my knowledge, I am seeing that, you know, many of the industries, they are going by this and they are thinking very progressive in this context. And Praveen, have you seen any impact on the uh, employment for the women after the implementation of this 2016? Uh, not exactly. Not exactly. In fact, uh, uh, I have seen a kind of comfort in our women workforce. You know, um, uh, they have a kind of uh, comfort in terms of the pay, in terms of the employment. There are a lot of thinkings and the apprehensions many of the people had in the past that what would happen in terms of my performance, in terms of my role, in terms of um, uh, what, what all could be the downside to it. But I think uh, this whole apprehension has gone by. And only good thing has happened. In fact, in our company in Vedanta, if you see, 
we look for an opportunity that suppose if you have gone on maternity leave when you come back can you come into an elevated leadership role and can we provide that kind of opportunity to our people our thinking has gone into that direction so um, maybe i think the downside the downside is something so negligible in in comparison to the positivity and the growth prospect what we are seeing and that is also the need of the country and need of the organization for the reason that we have so much of capex and so much of growth projects you need people you need high quality minds and needless to say when it comes to women workforce uh, they they outclass they outbeat uh, many of the you know uh, other folks in terms of the quality and performance and uh, so i already referred a couple of cases uh, related to the maternity benefit yeah. and uh, if we go you know little deeper then uh, what kind of the grievances generally you have seen uh, related to the maternity benefits and uh, uh, what is your experience how it has uh, impacted uh, you know uh, has been significant for the organizations of women's employment usually the grievance grounds for grievances are two uh, one is non compliance with the act second is you know claim against discrimination or harassment for that matter so when we are talking about non compliance so we are see like you know seen lot of cases where there's non compliance be it government sector or the private sector for that matter okay so mostly the cases come from you know uh, establishments uh, with limited resources right like you know small scale mid scale mid scale you know medium uh, enterprises and things like that and the second uh, the aspect is that you know in many, ca many cases people are like even the management or employees for that matter the managers they are not aware of the legal provisions right um in some cases it's you know it's that it, they have their own like reasons like economic constraints and other things you know when it comes to extending the crash facility or whatever for that matter so basically the claims are like based on you know uh, non compliance and of course courts are like always being you know pro uh, women employees for that matter which is a you know uh, which is required in fact the second sort of thing is as i said like you know lack of awareness and sensitization uh, in the organization sometimes the company will have like robust policy and they want to extend all sort of benefits but there is no proper sensitization at the managerial level right so a manager may not understand what the women employee requires at certain you know point of time maybe like when the woman employee rejoins she may be still you know lactating and uh, there may be they considering our socio economic conditions then like sometimes there will be dietary restrictions and lot many things psychologically they will be vulnerable so when there is no proper sensitization in the organization at all levels so we always see in sort of like you know discrimination claims sometimes it leads to like you know uh, uh, it becomes ugly like some comments gender based comments and leading to like sexual harassment cases as well so basically these are the like you know usual grounds what we see relating to grievances and it's come from like all sort of like you know establishment but we see most of this in you know uh, establishments which are like you know the medium like medium enterprises and uh, you know industry factories few other like you know sort of um, yeah not from uh, companies where they have like you know properly have like you know proper streamlined process and everything uh pravin vedanta is a very large organization so uh, uh, you must be uh, you know uh, uh, facing also sometimes some grievances uh, related to the maternity benefits act what what is what is your experience on this what would you like to add maybe uh, maybe whatever suba said i think uh, you know i i endorse what she is saying but um, in context of vedanta or some of the uh, similar kind of companies if you ask me i think more than grievances you know uh, we come across some request and uh, those requests are more around you know uh, looking for a kind of extended leave going beyond the 26 weeks you know that request comes into picture sometimes you know uh, our, our women folks they request for a kind of uh, flexibility in terms of the work hours uh, sometimes you know they uh, they request uh, for a kind of better role where they can comparatively you know work in a kind of cool off period for time being so those are some of the kind of request we come across and it and this is something very reasonable something which can be very seamlessly managed and can be accommodated so i think uh, less of grievance i would call it but more of request and we have gone beyond that in terms of you know 
uh, designing our policies in such a way that uh, we want them to decide instead of the organization deciding we want them to decide that how they want to you know take forward their leave period or how they want to take forward their their work and and they, they can do it by kind of you know selecting to take a sabbatical they can take the flexible there are kind of timing slots available they can decide if they want to start early or they want to start late uh, in the morning or they want to you know do the same kind of thing in the evening so i think uh, you know by adjusting those kind of flexibilities uh, we are seeing both the side even from the organization side and from the women folk side we are seeing a kind of positive balance and 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 it's it's working seamlessly at least to my knowledge uh, right, Praveen. Uh, I think uh, the work from home or extension of the leave, that is a general, uh, very common request generally we see after, uh, you know, after the 26 weeks of uh, uh, maternity leave. So, uh, uh, law, uh, you know, uh, advises if you can extend this, that's better, but there is, uh, it does not mandate uh, for the extension yes. or uh, any uh, work from home if your working style does not allow this. Sometimes also we get uh, these queries that uh, if, uh, uh, you know, my organization is not uh, allowing for the work from home, can we do anything? Uh, what is in law? So what is your advice to them? There has always been dispute regarding this, extending the work from home benefits for that matter, like in any other case. So employer feels you have to come to office, employee feels no, this work can be, you know, uh, worked out from home also. So there is always sort of like, you know, difference in opinion on these matters. There are like claims filed with uh, labor authorities. But uh, what is happening is even the labor authorities many times are not able to come to a conclusion because they don't understand what is the setup in the organization or maybe they don't understand the nature of work or, you know, like, you know, whether they may not be able to decide whether this is this job, which can be like, you know, work from home or from office based on like in, in that regard. So usually what happens is they try to like, you know, negotiate, you know, um, bring in amicable settlements. And in some cases, instead of one year, whatever, some regional period or hybrid work has been like extend to the employees. Somehow that has been like, you know, there are like uh, managed uh, by the authorities as well. And even like, you know, in some cases, employers are, flexible that way and when there is a you know request for work from home option they extend hybrid work uh, you know uh, arrangements and things like that or flexi hours and whatever so somehow that has been like you know that's the practice uh, in the industry and uh, yeah so of course it's always the you know uh, the point of dispute when it comes to like work from home is always the you know point of dispute whether right. it's maternity right. or anything for that Right. Uh, Praveen, because the Vedanta is large organization and uh, you have implemented this 26 week of uh, maternity, uh, you know, even uh, before the uh, this uh, amendment came into the force. Uh, but in your experience, how have you seen that uh, many organizations that may have, they have uh, 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 shifted some of their recruitment policies, some uh, amendments in their recruitment policies? Uh, women retention policies. What's your experience is on this? See, nothing pertaining to the act per se, but I think, um, uh, Ramesh, uh, we have been always very uh, pro towards kind of, you know, giving opportunity to women leaders. And I will give you a couple of examples. Um, even today, when it comes to the kind of campus hiring, uh, uh, we hire about 2,000 people from campus year on year. And you will be very happy to hear that 50% of 2,000, that is 1,000 women, the girls who joins us from campuses. And that's a huge number. Uh, even when it comes to a kind of lateral hiring, while our philosophy is to grow talent and leaders from within, even if it's a kind of um, uh, lateral hiring, our, our mandate is so clear to our business partners that we will not we will not go through the kind of long list or slate unless and until it has a kind of women leaders names in it. We always want to promote, we want to give opportunity and I think this is the mandate not for Vedanta but I think uh, as a country this is a great opportunity for all of us that how can we promote how can we bring uh, the women folks into the kind of industry, into the economy and I think we all together have gone beyond only the one section of the diversity which is gender but um, even in terms of the transgenders, you won't believe few years back we had zero numbers and uh, in when it comes to the transgenders uh, hiring and induction. But today, K 
case in point in Vedanta, we have more than 50, 60 transgenders who are working and they are into a very, very impactful roles. So I think the definition of diversity, equity, inclusion, and the positive reinforcement has helped all the organization to think beyond, you know, the limitations and uh, be it a kind of even startup or a kind of mid-size or a large size company. At least the ecosystem, what I hear, everybody is very gaga over it. Everybody want to contribute. Everybody want to participate and see that how they can out, how they can do better in this space. For the simple reason, they are seeing better outcome. The business performance is very good when they have a kind of progressive policies. So that's my experience, Ramesh, by and large. And um, and I think as an organization, as, as a kind of industry, we will have to come out with those kind of innovative thought process in terms of how do we bring more and more variety, more and more comfort, which can help us in terms of recruiting and also retaining our diversity talent. And gender is just one part of it. Praveen, uh, the country is right now on the election mode currently. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, what we can suggest about the maternity benefit? In your experience, what the government can do more? What they can do more to make this maternity, uh, you know, be uh, benefit act uh, for the smooth functioning? What is your advice to the uh, government? Hey, I, I will just take a clue from what uh, Suma has said. And uh, I don't think uh, I have seen much of... Uh, uh, of course, apart from the rule, regulation and the act part of it, maybe the government can support um, uh, the private sectors in terms of the funding, in terms of if they can also come together in, 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 in providing a kind of the way we have apprenticeship act, you know, uh, which provides a kind of lot of comfort and, you know, it encourages us to take more and more people whom we can train, who can, whom we can give a kind of stipend. But government also funds that parallelly to the employer or to the organization. So similarly, in this context, I think Suma was elaborating that at the beginning of uh, our talk, that maybe more participation, more encouragement from the government side to the private sectors, it could be of any size, that could, you know, uh, may give a kind of comfort uh, to the employer. Uh, I think I think that one point comes to my mind. Otherwise, um, at least with the due credit, I think we need to give to government, not from the act point of view, but in general, I think the encouragement, what we have seen, and we keep hearing about it from Nari Shakti, whether our Honorable Prime Minister is talking about it. And I think once he talks about it, he encourages and motivates many of the, you know, surrounding and entire ecosystem to, you know, go for that. And we have seen the benefit of it. I think entire corporation, entire corporate world, they try to see that how they can, how they can, you know, work out that in their company, how they can include or or create a kind of policy and processes through which they can encourage those kind of initiatives. So maybe it's happening, but maybe some kind of um, uh, what Suma has celebrated at the beginning can yeah, be, Suma, can be considered. Yeah, would like to advise uh, to the Modi government and also other political parties so that they can keep it in their manifesto as well, that uh, if they can add on, uh, you can say, work on this maternity benefit act that would be more, uh, uh, you know, smoothing for the organizations as well as for the employees. So uh, two things, uh, Ramesh. One is, uh, as you know, like, you know, these labor laws, including maternity benefit, uh, are enact can be enacted at the central level as well as the state level. We have the central act, states will enact the rules. Uh, see, in case of crash benefits, the central has, uh, you know, made the law, but most of the states are likely yet to, uh, uh, you know, float the rules for that matter, except few states, most of the states have not formulated the rules relating to crash. So the problem is there should there has to be some sort of coordination and in uh, implementation of these, you know, uh, welfare measures for that matter. Second thing is, uh, you know, uh, there is a like very good concept in the labor code, uh, which speaks about the facilitator come inspector. So the labor officers are also empowered to educate the employers or advise the employers under the new labor codes. That concept is not there under existing laws. So this is something that, you know, whether the labor code comes into force or not, this is something the you know government has to explore that you know labor officers or the authorities should not limit their powers only for inspection implementing the act right it should they should also have sort of you know uh, powers to educate create awareness sensitize the employers and employees so that way you know uh, the act can be implemented in an effective way than what we are seeing now 
Uh, Praveen, I think we have discussed all the important aspects of this uh, uh, subject, what we uh, uh, wanted to uh, understand. Uh, what would you like to add more or uh, what would be your concluding remarks? Uh, and if you can also share uh, what may be some you know, innovative ideas, uh, how the organizations can support the working mothers. Maybe I think by and large, we have covered a lot of point in our discussion, but uh, still my only piece of uh, unsolicited advice would be that uh, we should look for an opportunity wherever we can do you know uh, things better than the current state of affair. Uh, like you know, just few months back, those who, who would have seen the kind of uh, uh, initiative what we have taken in our company, we were very clear. Our intent was very clear that we we want to we want to move much much beyond in terms of the basics. And uh, that's where I think the entire leadership team and we came together and we said that uh, whatever law has, of course, that's something which one adhere to and one abide by. But can we give a kind of uh, opportunity, a comfort to our women folks by giving them a sabbatical uh, for not few weeks, but, you know, let them take for two years um, and, 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 and decide how they want to proceed. Then we decided that then... The second opportunity for us was, can we also look at not only maternity, but can we do something more on the paternity side, which is equally important because end of the day, it's not one part of the story, but you need to look at things holistically. So we also went step ahead and said that, okay, we need to decide on paternity leave and we did that. We took another step where we said that, you know, even the transgenders, you know, they need a kind of comfort. Can they also be covered in a kind of, uh, you know, policy where they get a comfort? We included them also in the entire gamut of the scheme. And we also said that they will be provided a kind of financial benefit in case if they want to undergo a kind of gender affirmation, you know, uh, 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 things. So even that was included. We also thought that, you know, many a time, uh, there is a maternity setback, which happens. We call it as a kind of miscarriages and all. Many a time we do not think of all those things. So, but these are all most important. Can we include that also and provide the most, uh, you know, reasonable benefit to our women folks? Can we have a very simplest thing to do, which is like no question asked leave in a month? Can we do that? It's as simple as you know, just implementing. And we did that. So I believe there are a lot of opportunity. It is just a kind of intent. If you have the intent, it is just a matter of designing and executing things. So my point of view would be that, you know, uh, let's come together and create more and more progressive policies around this subject. But I think apart from this subject, there are many other things which can be thought around, uh, which are progressive in nature and that can make the entire ecosystem of the organization very robust and comforting. So I think that's what um, my my two cents would be, Ramesh. No, excellent ideas. Excellent. Uh, Suma, what uh, would be your concluding remarks? Ramesh, uh, it's that like, you know, most of our workforce is from unorganized sector for that matter. There should be some sort of measure that required to be taken in respect of them because they are the like vulnerable group. Uh, you know, the women working there are really like, you know, you know, in many uh, cases they are in a pathetic condition, I must say. So, so that is something that government and everyone has to look upon. Um, otherwise, as mentioned by Praveen, it's all that, you know, flexible working, you know, sensitizing the uh, workforce, co-employees, managers, whomever it is, uh, and, you know, giving emotional support to women, that is what it's required. So, yeah, that, that's what, uh, you know, will be my concluding remark. Uh, I think uh, the corporates have accepted well this policy, the 26-week uh, maternity leave and uh, uh, good practice is going on. But always there is a scope for the improvement. So I think what the suggestions the panelist has uh, shared here, uh, maybe uh, the government can look into this. Thank you so much. Uh, for uh, thank you so much, Praveen and Suma for joining the conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you. Thank you, Ramesh. Thank you, Suma. Thank you. Thank you, Praveen.